Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies, bringing you a interesting video, I feel. Games Workshop very kindly sent me out the beautiful new Strike Force Augustus box set to review and make videos for you guys. So first off, a huge thank you to Games Workshop for sending that out. And I knew that I wanted to make a video on basically two of the units inside of it. Those are, of course, the Desolation Squad and the Brutalis Dreadnought. I was going to start with the Brutalis Dreadnought because I personally find that more interesting. And it's a bigger and cooler model. Um, but the controversy online in relation to the Desolation Squad is frankly shocking. The hatred for these guys is, is unparamount. <laughs> and I'm curious to know if... If it's one of those kind of sheeple moments, is it is it how most people actually feel? Or is it, I read an article on Reddit or online that says they're bad, so I decided that they're going to be bad now. Because I didn't notice any flaws with them when I first seen them. It's only when people started to write horrible things about them online that made me think, okay, maybe, maybe the gun is a little too big and maybe... But as I built and painted one for this video, I found it in... in a very enjoyable experience. I have the entire squad here ready to be finished off this evening and I've added them into my Black Templars army so I'm quite excited to try them out on the battlefield. They got some cool rules, the models are pretty cool and I'm happy enough with them. I definitely don't think they deserve the hatred that they've gotten online. So yeah I'm curious to know what you guys think. Did you guys not like them um, because of your initial opinion or did you see something online that made you then think about it or are you just going along with the flow? Let me know in the comments below. I'm quite curious on this as a subject. Before we get into the video, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to keep the lights on and the cameras rolling. So a huge thank you to all of you guys. If you're interested in joining my Patreon, don't forget some of the cool benefits to doing so are a private Discord server where you can talk to me and hang out with me on a daily basis, talk about your hobby, get some tips and tricks there. And also you get an extra video every single week for all of my patrons. So that's 52 extra videos a year. I think that's pretty cool. Okay guys, let's paint this guy up. Okay, and I've decided to go for the Desolation Sergeant with the mega gun that everybody seems to complain about. Just to, uh, to go whole hog into it. As you can see, I've added Black Templar shoulder pads to it, so he matches in with my army a little bit better. These came from the upgrade kit, gave him a coat of Chaos Black Spray, and then a Zenithal, more than a Zenithal, just basically an overcoat of Lead Belcher Spray as well. After that, we jump over to Black Templar, and we're going to apply this all over the armor of the miniature. If you've watched any of my Black Templar videos before, you will be well aware of this technique. It works a treat, and it has allowed me to get a good kind of 1800 points of Black Templars painted up in really no time at all and I think they're uh, to a quite a nice standard so I'm excited to add this Desolation Squad to that force and to continue making uh, more Templars. So here it is with the Black Templar applied as you can see it's a nice solid coat. Great starting point for the armor. After that we're going to jump over to Lead Belcher and give the model a very light dry brush. This kind of ties into that same kind of slap chop method um, except we're adding in the white dry brush now, except I'm using silver. So what this is going to do is just going to add the sh kind of sharpness to all the edges again before we go on to doing the shade later on. So later on in this process, we will be shading the model with null oil, which will darken down the armor again, but all the edges that we have caught with this dry brush will still be quite bright and act as natural edge highlights. Quite a quick and easy method for painting the black armor. After this, we're going to go into Zandri Dust. And this is for all the bits that are supposed to be that uh, white or creamy color on the miniature. So Black Templars traditionally have white uh, shoulder pads. I prefer doing them in more of a cream color and matching that in with their tabards and stuff. They're all the same kind of color. So any purity seals, any tabards or any shoulder pauldrons, they're all the same color for me. And it really does help them all match together. It makes it a really nice cohesive force. I added in a left knee pad to it as well, just for the fun of it. Ronox Hyde was used as a very quick base coat for his belt that goes around his waist. There would be some argument or speculation as to whether this is part of his armor. But there's been too many miniatures uh, recently that have had pouches hanging off of these things that I think they are actually leather belts that go around the, the midriff of a space marine holding his, you know, pistol holster on and stuff like that. We're going to use corn red as a base coat for all of the armor casings on the miniature. So, but this guy's got a bolt pistol in his hand as well. But then also he's got his crazy rocket pod system. So we're going to go in and get this thing base coated. You can go as much or as little uh, 
casing work as you want on this i actually went a little bit less than they're recommended the underslung pod i left mostly silver but i did do the main body casing the grip and the the large rocket casing in red this really does help to add a, a nice sprit of color into the miniature as it is mostly dark colors with the silvers and blacks so having this red added in really does add a lot to the model From here it's back to lead belcher to give a proper base coat to the rest of the weapons so you can see the handles the trigger guards you know the clips basically the rest of the pistol that isn't red and the same thing for the rocket everything on the rocket that isn't now red needs a touch up of silver the lead belcher kind of zenithal spray thing doesn't give you a solid enough coat to be considered a, a base coat of silver so you will want to go on and do that does not take long and it does add something to the miniature from here we are going to go on to uh, some of the other metallics that we need to do so mainly that's going to be gold so retributor armor gold was in and it's going to be brought in for all the kind of ornamentation so the uh, winged aquila across his chest is going to go gold and then his shoulder pauldrons are actually a little bit fancier than normal ones they have an extra metallic detail on the top and i decided to do those in gold as well just to help signify this guy as the sergeant i should have probably done the skull in the center of the head of his helmet but i forgot if i'm being brutally honest i might go back and do that again another time but that's fine i'm also tempted to go back uh, to this squad and add in a million purity seals all over them just to help them tie in with the black templars a little bit more again Okay, and with all the base coats now applied, it's time for the all over shade. And for that, we're gonna use Nolan Oil and apply this to absolutely every part of the miniature. Quick and easy steps, gonna tie everything together. It's gonna to add another layer to that armor and it really does add something to the entire piece. Uh, I applied some Martian Iron Crust to the base uh, while the shade was on. Didn't have time to fully dry before I went onto the layering stage. So we'll have to finish it up later on in the video. The Shapti Bone was then used to uh, layer up all of those bits. We started with the uh, tan color in the base coats, that's Zandri Dust. So obviously his knee pad and all of his shoulder pads. You'll notice the crosses in the center of his shoulder pads aren't painted at all yet. That's because if they were painted, doing this stage is an absolute nightmare. It, like it takes so much time. Whereas if you don't paint the cross, it means layering up that cream color in the shoulder pads is so much easier and then you just go back in after the fact and paint the crosses black again my first squad of crusaders i did it the opposite way around and i painted around the crosses and it was a nightmare lead belt was brought back in to re-layer up uh, those details on the guns again just add a little bit of color back into them a little bit of a sheen and we're also going to use this to highlight the gold so those like little dab highlights and all the sharp points it's a very quick step and it helps to get all the metallics on the model layered up in one quick step. I went on to a pure white, so whatever your favorite white is, and I painted in all of the lenses on this miniature. Now normally that's not a lot, but on this guy it's quite a lot. The targeting system on his back has like four of them. There's two different on the uh, gun itself. And then of course the miniature's eye lenses. So take your time and get all of these done with a nice base coat of white. After that, we're gonna start with the layering process on the weapon casing. So we're gonna do a two-stage highlight. The first one is gonna be Mephiston Red. And as you can see, I'm taking my time and being careful with this. I really want this to look quite sharp and quite clean because as these guns are large, they will be seriously focal points of this miniature. It's what people will be seeing when they look at the model on the table. So spending a little bit of extra time on the, the guns themselves will help the final result of these miniatures quite a lot. So that's why I'm going to go for not one but two stages of highlight on this gun. I'm now going to jump up to Evil Sun's Scarlet and do another coat again. This one's going to be a little bit lighter, a little bit less. But nevertheless, it will add an extra uh, pop of color to the model.
as you can see, it is making the gun pop out quite a lot. Okay, we're going to go for Warp Lightning for the optics on this miniature. So for everything that we painted white, except for his eye lenses, we're going to do the Warp Lightning green. If you have any bright, vibrant green contrast, you can use that for this particular part. Um, or blue, or whatever color you want your optics to be. I just like the uh, the traditional like night vision style color. Most optics seem to be in, in movies, so I went for the same thing. For the eye lenses, I went for the same color that I went for for the rest of my Black Templars, which is red. So I just threw some Blood Angels red contrast, loaded with my brush, and filled in the eye sockets with them. It gave a really nice result and kind of gives it a, a glowing eye lens effect with doing very little work. Avalon Sunset was then used for all of the missile tips. So obviously there's one large one on this one, and then the pod underneath has about 10 small rockets on it as well. And you want to base coat these in with Avalon Sunset. They were a tiny bit gaudy for me, so I did actually go back in with a uh, black shade null oil again. I just went over those yellows just to dull them down just a smidge. After that, we're back to Lead Belcher once again, but this time it's for a little bit of sponge chipping on the miniature. So all I want to do is lightly uh, add some uh, Lead Belcher to a sponge and just dab it at the model just to give it a slight uh, bit of chipping, bit of weathering across the armor. Nothing crazy. It just breaks up the amount of black on the model because these guys aren't wearing tabards or anything. A little bit of touch like that really goes a long way. And with that, we have our finished Desolation Sergeant. Very cool model to build and paint. I'm quite delighted with him. I've set myself a challenge to uh, finish off the rest of the squad before the end of today. So we will see if I manage to get that done. Here are some still images of the, uh, the beast himself. And I hope you guys enjoyed the, mo the model and enjoyed the video. And there we have it. My Black Templar's Desolation Sergeant is painted up, ready for the battlefield. Like I said at the beginning, I like how this guy turned out. I'm quite proud of him. And I'm more than happy to uh, field him in my Black Templar's army. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like below. If you have any questions about the Guilty Megastus or anything else, uh, put it in the comments below and I will get back to each and every one of you guys. If you have not already subscribed to my channel, please take two seconds out of your day and hit that subscribe button. It means the world to me. Thank you guys for sticking around to the end. I'll see you in the next one.